Hello, you're watching The Big Story with me, Chiao Suen. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel to stay up to date with our live news updates. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic was a struggle for many of us, but one group of people in particular fought the hardest to get Singapore through the storm. Frontliners involved in the fight against COVID-19 were given a standing ovation in Parliament today to honour their hard work and sacrifices. Speaking in Parliament today, Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong expressed appreciation for those who contributed to the fight against COVID-19. We express a grateful nation's deepest appreciation for your contributions and courage. Your dedication helped Singapore to keep going through unprecedented and uncertain times. Your acts of duty, sacrifice and care for fellow Singaporeans uplifted our spirits, boosted our confidence and kept all of us safe. So once again, we would like to say a very big thank you to all of you. Mr Wong also spoke about the setting up of a dedicated forward planning team to prepare for the battle against the next pandemic. He added that while Singapore cannot prepare for everything that may happen, some of the plans can be used to support pandemic response as well as to ensure proper use of our resources. But at the same time, realistically, we cannot plan for every possibility. Every new pathogen we meet will involve a degree of dealing with the unknown, and it will be prohibitively expensive to cater for a wide range of worst cases. So we will have to strike the right balance to make good use of our limited resources. This may involve planning for contingencies that can be pivoted just in time to support our pandemic response, so we don't have to build layers of redundancies that may remain underused outside of a crisis, but cost us a disproportionate amount of resources to maintain. In other words, our response will have to be a combination of preparedness and improvisation. Some scrambling is inevitable and inherent in the process as we discover more information and consider the need to adjust our posture along the way. And that is why we must dedicate resources and equip our crisis management structures with better forward planning capabilities so that we anticipate, better anticipate and imagine what might happen next, be prepared for the unexpected and be ready to adapt to changing circumstances as they unfold. By doing so, we don't have to front load all of the investments to cater for all contingencies, but we must create a dynamic, forward-oriented organisation and process whose main mission is to anticipate and monitor risk to keep buying insurance where needed. So as the crisis develops, we can continue to buy more insurance and options for the future. Also in Parliament, a subject that has attracted much public interest. MPs asked why Mr Lee Sian Yang and his wife, Ms Lim Suet Fern, were publicly named while being investigated for giving false evidence in judicial proceedings. Law and Home Affairs Minister K Shanmugam cited examples of several past cases in which those involved were publicly named, explaining that in deciding to do so, assessment of all the facts and the context has to be made in considering the public interest. He also explained that in cases where there is a lot of misinformation, the police might also make public the accurate facts relating to the case to dispel the falsehoods. Mr Shanmugam also added that the discussions surrounding Number 38 Oxley Road, which was the home of former Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, are of significant public interest. The findings by the Disciplinary Tribunal and the Court of Three Judges in the disciplinary proceedings against Mrs Lee Swet Fun and their findings on Mr Lee Sian Yang and Mrs Lee Swet Fun are matters of public record. The Disciplinary Tribunal and the Court of Three Judges had said Mr. Lee Sin Young and Mrs. Lee Swetpern were lying. They had been found to be dishonest and more. All of that is public. 
They have also essentially absconded from jurisdiction. We take this seriously, and those facts were disclosed so that this House can have a full and complete picture when a question had been asked which related to their conduct. If we cannot or should not answer the question in part or full, then we would have said so. In deciding whether we make public that investigations are ongoing, Mr. Lee Sien Young and Mrs. Lee Swetburn will have every right to provide explanations on the matters being investigated if they eventually decide to do the right thing and cooperate with the police. It is their choice whether they want to be fugitives from justice or whether they come and explain why they say the courts were wrong to say that they had lied. Thailand has dissolved its parliament, paving the way for elections to take place in May. The order, which was submitted by Prime Minister Prayut chan cha last week, has been endorsed by the Thai King. The royal decree is effective from today. The Election Commission has tentatively set the date for elections as May 7th, with election law stating that polls must take place between 45 and 60 days after the dissolution. The Monetary Authority of Singapore says the takeover of Credit Suisse by UBS is not expected to have an impact on the stability of the country's banking system. MAS says Credit Suisse will continue operating in Singapore without interruptions, its customers having access to their accounts and its contracts with counterparties remaining in force. The two Swiss banks primarily run private and investment banking businesses in Singapore. The authorities' statement comes after UBS agreed to buy longtime rival Credit Suisse for over 4.3 billion Singapore dollars. UBS shares, though, plunged by almost 9% as markets opened, while shares of Credit Suisse slumped by almost 64% in pre-market trade to a new low. This despite a deal engineered by Swiss authorities to try to reassure investors about the health of the banking system. The bankruptcy of a global systematically important bank would have caused irreparable economic turmoil in Switzerland and throughout the world. For this reason, Switzerland had to take the responsibilities beyond its own borders. These efforts have paid off. The Federal Council is convinced that UBS takeover of Credit Suisse has laid the foundations for greater stability both in Switzerland and internationally. And relaying information during an emergency to authorities in Singapore will soon become easier. Those calling into 999 or 995 will now be able to provide a live video stream to officers via an SMS link that is sent to the caller. However, authorities are emphasising that the technology will not allow them to access other parts of the caller's phone. My colleagues find out more about how this new system works. Hello, police. Yes, this is 999. Uh, I noticed a fight happening across my block. Uh, there's two uh, individuals that are attacking each other. Okay, can I know the exact location, sir? The Singapore Police Force and Civil Defence Force have launched the emergency video system. This enables those calling the emergency services to stream live videos to the respective agencies. This will be useful during emergencies where the police or civil defence may face difficulties with understanding the situation or if the caller is unable to communicate the extent of the situation. You'll be receiving an SMS uh, from Police 999 shortly containing a hyperlink. Do you have a mobile device with video recording and speaker function? Yes. You need to click onto the hyperlink. Once you receive, uh, I need you to please select Allow. During a 999 or 995 call, the system is activated through a link sent via SMS. I received your message and I see the hyperlink which I'm going to click now. And uh, I'm clicking Agree. Okay, we'll do so. Okay, concurrently, I will also uh, route the case to SCDF, alright? Uh, we'll get ambulance to proceed down to the location as well. Okay, so uh, I think we have already established the connection. Are you able to maybe move your handphone camera and point it to where exactly the incident location is? Can you see my cursor here? Is this the location that I'm pointing? Yes, that's the location. Okay, Correct. I can see there's two subjects and they are still fighting. Okay, and I can see some crowd. Okay, my officer have just uh, updated me that they have just arrived to the location. Thank you so much for the information. Okay, I will need to end the call right now. Thank you so much, sir. So when we are using this system, um, 
the member of public will be our eyes and ears. This system will assist police to have a better awareness of the situation. This will provide us with relevant information that enables uh, us to better understand the current situation and uh, respond to the emergency more effectively. The video can also be shared between both agencies should the situation require it. The emergency video system is only meant for circumstances where callers are safe. The system will not be used on all calls. And those are our top stories for today. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Chiao Zuan and I'll see you tomorrow on The Big Story.